welcome to math on ice integral equations june 2018 paper part b and c we will see one question from part b and two questions from part c there are totally three questions the resolvent kernel of the integral equation this is a very basic for a uh, problem resolvent kernel formula which is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to infinity lambda to the power n k n plus 1 of x comma t where k n plus 1 of x comma t is equal to integral t to x k of x comma z into k n of z comma t into dz now we will find one by one k of x comma t is given in the question which is equal to e to the power t minus x and that is equal to k1 of x comma t k2 of x comma t is equal to integral t to x it as it the given question is a Volterra type we take the limit from t to x so if it is a Fredholm type limit will be finite we will take that limit itself so here it is from t to x k of x comma t that is here we have to find k of x comma z so here e to the power in the place of t we have z so z minus x into e to the power again we do the same thing in the place of uh, x we put z so it is t minus z into dz so which is equal to t to x e to the power z e to the power minus x into e to the power t into e to the power minus z and these two terms bases are same and powers are different when you add the powers it sum, sums up to zero so we get this e to the power e to the power t minus x we can uh, take it outside so the leftover term will be one so this is integral dz and the limit is from t to x so e to the power t minus uh, x z the lower limit and the upper limit so we get e to the power t minus x into x minus t this is k2 of x comma t and we find k3 of x comma t which is equal to integral t to x e to the power z minus x there is no change in this term and we find this term to be e to the power t minus x so e to the power in the place of uh, x we will substitute it as z so t minus z into z minus sorry z minus t into dz So this implies integral t to x e to the power here we have this one multiplied with this one e to the power z into e to the power minus x e to the power t into e to the power minus z into z minus z minus t into dz that will give us which is equal to and these two terms basis or same add the powers we get it as 0 e power 0 is 1 so we can take out e to the power t minus x outside integral t to x z, mi z minus t into dz so this is equal t to the power uh, t minus x z minus t the whole square divided by 2 and apply the limit t and x when you put the upper limit we get it as x minus t the whole square divided by 2 when you put the lower limit t minus t will vanish it will be 0 so here k3 of x comma t we got it as e to the power t minus x into x minus t the whole square divided by 2 and for k4 of x comma t which is equal to integral t to x e to the power e to the power z minus x e to the power z minus x and then e to the power in the place of x substitute z so t minus z into z minus t the whole squared by 2 into dz so this will give us as like the previous steps we follow and we get e to the power t minus x outside integral t to x so we can take 2 also outside integral t to x z minus t the whole squared into t z when you take the integral you will have it as e to the power t minus x by 2 outside and this will be z minus t the whole power 3 divided by 3 and you have to apply the limits t to x so which is equal to e to the power t minus x by 2 and this part will be when you apply the upper limit we get x minus t the whole q by 3 and when you apply the lower limit this will become 0 so this is equal to e to the power t minus x x minus t the whole cube divided by 3 factorial and this way here 2 fact, uh, two can be written as 2 factorial so when you just see there is a general case k4 is given to be e to the power t minus x we got it as e to the power t minus x into x minus t the whole cube by 3 factorial for k3 also we find the term e to the power t, t minus x for k2 also we get the term e to the power t minus x divided by 1 factorial so what is the general 
so k n of x comma t will be equal to e to the power t minus x x minus t the whole power n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial so k n plus 1 of x comma t will be equal to e to the power t minus x x minus t the whole power n divided by n factorial now for the resolvent kernel r of x comma t comma lambda which is equal to summation n is equal to 0 to infinity lambda power n what is lambda here in the question lambda is equal to 1 in the place of lambda we have 1 so lambda is equal to 1 1 power n is 1 itself so we will be left with this term alone e to the power t minus x x minus t the whole power n divided by n factorial so the terms independent of n can be taken outside so e to the power t minus x can be taken outside summation n is equal to 0 to infinity x minus t the whole power n divided by n factorial this is exactly the formula of exponential function when you see this is e to the power t minus x outside so when you apply 0 here x minus t the whole power 0 which is 1 1 by uh, 0 factorial which will give you 1 1 plus and then we will have x minus t the whole power 1 by 1 factorial and so on this is the expansion of a exponential function so we get e to the power x minus t so at last e to the power t minus x and uh, bases are same add the powers plus x minus t xx cancels tt cancels we get it as e power 0 which is equal to e power 0 is 1 so the answer is 1 we get the answer as 1 second option is the correct answer next question from part c Consider the integral equation phi of x is equal to lambda times of integral 0 to pi cos x minus co cos x cos t minus 2 sin x sin t into phi of t dt plus cos 7x. Here f of x is equal to cos 7x and we have a kernel. Kernel is cos x cos t minus 2 sin x sin t. So we have uh, alpha 1 is equal to cos x and then uh, beta 1 is equal to cos t. Then alpha 2 is equal to minus sin x and then beta 2 minus 2 sin x. So here beta 2 will be equal to sin t. They have asked in the question that which of the following statements are true for the behavior of the solution. Okay, we solve by the matrix method ax is equal to b where the matrix a is equal to 1 minus lambda a11 uh, minus lambda a12 minus lambda a21 and then 1 minus lambda a22. And then we have the X matrix, X matrix to be C1, C2 and the B matrix to be B1, B2 where this A, I, J will be equal to integral, integral what is the limit 0 to pi is the limit, integral 0 to pi here, beta I of X into alpha J of X into DX and for Vj we get it as integral 0 to pi f of x into beta j of x into dx. Now we will find 1 by 1 a11 is equal to integral 0 to pi. What is our beta 1? Beta 1 is cos. So we get cos x and alpha 1 is cos x. So cos squared x dx which is equal to integral 0 to pi 1 plus cos 2x divided by 2 into dx. So we get this 1 by 2 outside. When you just integrate you will find this cos 2x integral 0 to pi cos 2x is equal to 0. And only this part will be present. So integration of 1 is x. So we get x and the limit is from 0 to pi. We get pi by 2 as the answer. Now for a12, a12 integral 0 to pi, beta 1 and alpha 2. Beta 1 is cos x and alpha 2 is minus 2 sin x. So minus 2 taken outside sin x cos x into dx. So this is equal to integral 0 to pi minus 2 outside integral 0 to pi uh, sin x into cos x m is equal to n when m is equal to n of sin x cos x integral 0 to pi means this value will also be 0 because it is sin 2x divided by 2 2 2 cancels integral 0 to pi sin 2x is equal to 0 so we get this part to be 0 or, or else you can expand this sin 2x when you just integrate it we get minus cos 2x divided by 2 and when you apply the limits you will eventually get 0 only and then a21 is equal to uh, integral beta 2 and alpha 1 so beta 2 is sin x and alpha 1 is cos x so again integral 0 to pi sin x into cos x again this is also equal to 0 as we did in the previous thing and a 2 2 is equal to what is a 2 2 a 2 2 is equal to beta 2 and alpha 2 which is equal to minus 2 sin squared x so minus 2 taken outside 0 to pi sin squared x into dx here we get minus 2 outside. So this is 0 to pi 1 minus cos 2x divided by 2 into dx. 2, 2 cancels each other. 
1 minus cos 2x. When you integrate cos 2x with respect to 0, I mean uh, x, where from the limit 0 to pi, we get it as 0. So only 1 will be left, left over. When you just integrate 1, we get x. So x here and outside we have a negative 0 to pi. So this is equal to minus pi. So a11, a12 we got. So we can write the matrix A. A is equal to, what is our 1 minus lambda a11? What is our a11 which is equal to pi by 2? So 1 minus lambda pi by 2 and here 0, here 0. And this is 1 plus lambda pi. So this is equal to 1 plus lambda pi. And then uh, we need to find, uh, what is the matrix? We need to find V1 and V2. We need to find V1 and V2. Beta 1 is cos uh, x and beta 2 will be equal to sin x, right? And f of x is given to be cos 7x. In the given question, f of x is equal to cos 7x. So first V1 is equal to integral 0 to pi cos 7x into beta 1. What is our beta 1 which is equal to cos x? So we get this, this as cos x into dx. Now integral 0 to pi cos mx into cos nx. m and n are not equal. So therefore, if, if cos uh, 7, here cos 7x, here also if it is cos 7x, then that, uh, that will be equal to pi by 2. But here this is not cos 7x. Here it is equal to 1, cos 1x and cos 7x. This term coefficient and this term coefficient are different. Therefore, this is obviously 0. And v2 is equal to integral 0 to pi. Again, cos 7x. And then uh, beta 2, which is equal to sin uh, x. So we get it, get this as cos 7x and sin x into dx. So this is equal to, when you solve by the formula cos a sin b, we get it as sin of uh, a minus b. Uh, that is equal to 7x minus x will give us 6x minus sin of a plus b that is equal to 8x into dx. So when you solve integral 0 to pi sin 6x is obviously 0 and integral 0 to pi sin 8x dx is equal to 0 because this will give us minus cos 6x divided by 6 and 0 to pi here and this will give us plus cos 8x by 8 8x by 8 integral 0 to pi when you apply here cos 6 pi and cos 0 both are same entries cos 8 pi minus cos uh, 0 both are same entry so this will also be equal to 0 v1 and v2 both are 0 so we get the matrix b to be 0 we get the matrix b to be 0 so only a matrix a matrix, we got it as 1 minus lambda pi by 2, 0, 0, 1 plus lambda pi. And then we got our B matrix to be 0, 0. So this is a matrix which is a homogeneous case. In the homogeneous case, we have AX is equal to 0 type equation. No solution is never possible. No solution is not possible. So there exists the lambda belonging to R such that the solution does not exist. This is not at all possible because it is a homogeneous case. Therefore, we it is not at all possible. Uh, because in this question integral uh, equation is not homogeneous because cos 7x is here this is not homogeneous but then the matrix which we got ax is equal to b here b term is completely zero so this matrix representation is a homogeneous form now uh, this uh, homogeneous form will never contain no solution so there exists lambda belonging to us such that solution does not exist is not it is it is false solution exists for every lambda belonging to us solution exists so first one is true for sure and then there exists lambda, okay, in my infinitely many solution and finitely many solution. They have given there exists lambda belonging to us such that there are more than one but finitely many solutions. And there exists lambda belonging to us such that there are infinitely many solutions. So we have to find the lambda for which it is having infinitely many solutions or not. For infinitely many solutions, what will happen? Determinant of the matrix A should be equal to zero, right? So one minus lambda pi by two into, it is like, like direct uh, representation from the uh, linear algebra. So it is equal to zero. Determinant, I have taken it as zero. So this will give us uh, 1 is equal to lambda pi by 2 and lambda is equal to 2 by pi. And then uh, lambda pi is equal to minus 1. I get lambda is equal to minus 1 by pi. For these two values of lambda, we get infinite number of solutions, not finite number of solutions, infinitely many solutions. So this is false. So the correct answers are A and D, first option and the last option. Moving on to the next question. Yes. The values of lambda for which the following equations has a non-trivial solution. Phi of x is equal to, is a Fredholm equation. Phi of x is equal to lambda integral 0 to pi. K of x comma t into phi of t dt. Now, kernel is varying for x. But then we need for t. So, I am going to replace x by t. So, this, this will be replaced by 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to x. And here we will have x less than or equal to t less than or equal to pi. Replacing x by t, we have this as cos uh, sin uh, x to be sin t and this has to be cos uh, x and here we have it as cos t and then sin x. Now, uh, 
putting the value of k of x comma t in this integral equation we have it as lambda integral i'll take lambda outside in lambda integral 0 to x we have sin t and then cos x into phi of t dt this is actually phi of x is equal to and then we have uh, plus integral x to phi uh, x to pi what is your cos t sin x into phi of t dt so we solve the problem by the method of Leibniz rule so phi dash of x is equal to I'm going to take the differentiation phi dash of x is equal to lambda outside uh, in uh, the differentiation of integration will give us integral 0 to x sin x cos x into phi of t dt right so this will be integral 0 to x when I differentiate this one with respect to x I'll have this as minus sin x sin t as it is phi of t into dt and the upper limit case we have it as plus sin x cos x into phi of x and then for this part we have integral x to pi differentiation of sin x is cos x into cos t into phi of t dt and then uh, this part will be plus uh, we have this to be cos x yes for the upper limit we have zero for the upper limit we have zero for the lower limit case only we have the uh, in, uh, limit uh, to be a variable of x so we get minus of uh, cos x into sin x into phi of x so these two terms cancels each other now we have to take again a uh, differentiation that is phi double dash of x is equal to lambda outside and then differentiating this part we have integral zero to x minus sin x the differentiation will give us my minus as it is sin x differentiation is cos x and then sin t into phi of t dt plus the upper limit part what is the upper limit part which is equal to x and then here we have a negative so this is minus sin x here and then here also we find a sin x so sin squared x into phi of x and then here in this part it is integral x to pi cos x differentiation will give us minus sin x and this cos t into phi of t dt and this negative as it is like uh, this uh, upper limit is having a constant and the lower limit is having the variable so we we have a have a negative here and then cos x cos x will give us cos square x into phi of x so this is um uh, this is phi double dash of x is equal to lambda times of you can take out negative outside lambda times of integral zero to x integral 0 to x cos x into sin t into phi of t uh, dt and then I have taken minus lambda outside right so this will be integral 0 to x and then from x to pi sin x cos t into phi of t dt and this part this part when we take we have this uh, minus lambda phi of x outside only leftover thing is sin squared x plus cos squared x which is equal to 1. So I will bring this term to the left side. So it is phi double dash of x plus lambda into phi of x is equal to. When you look here it is minus lambda times of something which is the question itself. When you look at the question here this is exactly present here. Integral 0 to x sin t and cos x. Cos x sin t right. Cos x sin t integral 0 to x phi of t dt. And then from the limit x to phi we have cos t sin x. So here also cos t sin x. So this is actually equal to lambda times of this whole thing is equal to phi of x. Now I am having negative of this, right? So negative of this will be equal to minus phi of x. So this is equal to minus phi of x. So I'll have phi double dash of x plus phi of x into 1 plus lambda is equal to 0. Now this is a uh, the, this is a differential equation. Now we will solve the differential equation. The auxiliary equation will be m squared plus 1 plus lambda is equal to 0. When I take, they have asked in the question that uh, has a non-trivial solution. Okay. For non-trivial, if I take uh, 1 plus lambda to be 0, I will get a trivial solution. How? Because you, you can try by yourself. You can try it yourself. So, in that case, when you take 1 plus lambda to be 0, you get trivial case. 1 plus lambda minus, it, it is negative. If it is negative means... 1 plus lambda is negative also we get a trivial case only when 1 plus lambda is uh, greater than 0 we get a non-trivial case and we will solve that case on only and if you want to try those two results you can try you will get trivial uh, solution that is 0 solution okay now phi of 0 phi of 0 when I apply I'll have this term to be 0 and when I apply 0 here I'll have sine 0 sine 0 is uh, 0 
So I'll have this to be zero. Pi of zero is equal to zero. And eventually here, when I find phi dash of zero, phi dash of zero, this integral will vanish and I'll have zero to pi. When I apply zero here, I'll have zero to pi cos zero is one. So for zero, it is not vanishing, right? Phi dash of pi. Let me find for phi dash of pi. Phi dash of pi will be equal to this limit vanishes. And when I apply pi here, sine pi is zero. So this is zero. So I get the condition phi of zero is equal to zero and phi dash of pi is equal to zero. Now I'm going to substitute this one here after when I solve for y of x. So we got the condition that phi of zero is equal to zero and phi dash of pi is equal to zero. Now I'm going to take one plus lambda squared as one plus lambda is equal to mu squared. So let me take one plus lambda is equal to mu squared, which is greater than zero. I'm going to take this term greater than zero. Okay. So m squared plus mu squared is equal to zero. So I get m squared is equal to minus mu squared. M is equal to plus or minus i mu. So I get it as y of x is equal to a cos mu x plus b sine mu x. And then y dash of x will be equal to minus a mu sine mu x and then plus b mu cos mu x. So this will be y of uh, 0. Now everything in phi. So I, I'll write this y and phi. So this is phi, this is phi, and this is phi dash. Okay, phi of 0. Phi of 0 is equal to 0. When I apply 0 here, I'll get this part to be 0. And this is a cos 0 is 1. This is equal to 0. I get a to be 0. And when I apply zero, uh, pi dash of pi, which is actually equal to 0, and that is equal to a is already 0. So this is 0. And this is b pi into cos mu pi. So I get cos mu pi into b pi, b mu is equal to 0. So cos mu pi is equal to 0. Therefore, mu pi will be equal to 2n plus 1 into pi by 2. So pi pi cancels. I'll have mu is equal to, mu is equal to 2n plus 1 into uh, 1 by 2. That is divided by 2. This is what my mu is. So what have I taken for lambda? I have to find. I have to find lambda. This is what the given question is. So lambda, I have taken 1 plus lambda is equal to mu square. So 1 plus lambda is equal to mu square. So I'll have this as lambda is equal to 1 minus mu squared, right? Lambda is equal to mu squared minus 1. Lambda will be mu squared minus 1 and that is equal to what is our mu? 2n plus 1, the whole square divided by 4 minus 1. So that will be equal to, is it present in the option? Okay, let us verify. 2n plus 1, the whole squared. Okay, let me take this one as 2n plus 1 divided by 2, the whole squared minus 1, which is equal to, when I, when I take the denominator separately for each numerator, I'll have 2n by 2 plus 1 by 2, the whole squared minus 1, which is equal to n plus 1 by 2, the whole squared minus 1. This is what my lambda is. This is equal to lambda. n plus 1 by 2, the whole squared minus 1. Yes, that is present in the first option. So only the option number one is true and all the other options are false. Thank you.